Welcome back to the tutorials, except uh, this time it's not a Photoshop tutorial, it's an After Effects tutorial. A lot of the Photoshop things that I've been covering uh, have to do with visual effects and some important VFX concepts. So an uh, important one here we're doing in After Effects because this would be a decent program to do it. And that of course is rotoscoping, as you might see by the image here. Now rotoscoping is not the um, best thing that After Effects does. After Effects is not really primarily designed for it, but it can do it okay. And we can learn some important concepts about rotoscoping that can carry over when you do some professional level dedicated roto programs. And the nice thing is that with After Effects being part of the Adobe Suite, almost everyone can have access to it. Now I'd like to show a few things here as I'm uh, doing some roto on the footage. A nice piece of uh, video courtesy of the free videos at pexels.com. And the idea here is that if something needs to be changed with the shoe, maybe the background, this, this uh, surface would be replaced, or some sort of effect around here, we would need to roto that out. There's really not a whole lot of other way to do this. We can't key it, and uh, extract is not going to give us enough information, maybe the darker parts, but really this is a, um, a classic opportunity for roto with roto shapes. Now, I know if you look at Rotoscope in, uh, in After Effects, you may see things with the Roto Brush. Right up here, we have the Roto Brush and the Refine Edge Tool right there. And, you know, those are okay, but honestly, they're, they're not that good. As I've tried to, um, to use them, they don't really give very good, accurate results. And what you want uh, with Roto is clean, accurate results. And I think um, the, the better results you get with these, uh, these tools here, have to do with the, the sharper the image and the better the amount of contrast that you have between what you're going to roto out and what you're going to keep. The truth is that these tools aren't magic. They're really using the color information and channels, stuff you might get with Extract anyway. So uh, just so you know, I, uh, as I've done a decent amount of roto professionally in movies, it's always been traditional stuff like this with vector roto shapes. I uh, haven't seen anyone using stuff like the roto brush for the real stuff. So there still is uh, certainly a good bit of use for this. Now I want to show you what I have here. I've got uh, two, um, two layers. It's just the same bit of footage, uh, each layer. And I'm looking at footage working at a 24 frames per second. So if you're going to roto, you don't want to have to roto more than you have to, so you might as well work at 24 frames per second unless there's a reason that you would have to do another one. So of course it's the same, um, the same image duplicated, and this bottom layer if I just hit T for opacity, you can see I've, I've taken that down. So if I go up to 100%, there's uh, the full thing there. And if I take it down, I've got this bright orange as the background color for my composition. That's what we're looking at there. So I can kind of check this and see how my, uh, my roto is going as I'm looking against this background. And this is a common thing to do to check the quality of a roto is to put it against some kind of bright background like this and see how accurate and clear it is. And of course the roto is happening right here on this layer and that's where you see the shapes. I'll open that up and you can see my masks and I got a few of them going here. We're not going to go over all the roto happening and, and, and do it because uh, watching roto is about as exciting as watching uh, paint dry but I want to let you know about the important concepts for how you would, you would roto. Uh, goodbye DivX, not again. Okay, and uh, kind of how we'd go about this. Now, After Effects is not your best roto tool, and there's some uh, important things that it does not have, but I want to show you some good concepts here. You, you can learn how to, to rotoscope in After Effects, and these concepts will carry you over to other programs, which so is really nice to start. And uh, if, I, if I take this up a bit, I'm going to be able to see that background. And, um, you know, if I turn that off, there's my uh, just background there with all the shapes rotated out. And uh, we have this bit here. And what I want to show you, clicking on this layer, is the number of shapes I have. And this is important when you roto. It's just this foot here. And I've actually broken it into four shapes. One is the pants leg. One is the ankle. One is the back part of the shoe. And the other is the front part. So instead of just rotoing with one shape overall, what you want to do is you want to break it up into various pieces. Think of it as an actual three-dimensional articulated puppet almost. And where things are naturally changing or moving, 
or have a joint or something like that, you're going to want to make those things a different shape. I guarantee you it's the best way to go. You'll get more accurate, smoother roto, and it'll be easier to get those shapes happening. Now, I haven't rode the full thing here, but I've just made these these these, um, these shapes. And I've got the four and right here on, um, on my very first layer. So, of course, if you're new to roto, what you might uh, need to know is that we're using these uh, vector shapes. Rotoscoping is done with vector shapes. And in After Effects, that means we're going to use Bezier curves. So all that good uh, fun you had using the pen tool and the Bezier handles and all that, same thing applies here with the roto shapes in After Effects. Other uh, more advanced rotoscope programs will have different types of curves you can use, beast blinds and things like that. But in this case, we're using our good old uh, Bezier curves. And generally speaking, you're going to use the pen tool right here. You also may very well be using the uh, convert tool right there. Maybe the mask feather tool, but we're not going to really get into that, I don't think. And also, any shape you make over here with these shape tools would make a mask as well. So in After Effects, um, rotoing is done with, with a mask. When you do keying and you have an alpha and all that, that is uh, considered a mat. When you work with the shapes and create roto shapes, that's a mask. So you can see After Effects calls it masks. And you can have a whole bunch here on one layer. So this one layer, that's my, my video footage, and I'm going to have a mask on it. And each time you use the pen tool, it's going to make a brand new mask. And you may end up having a whole bunch depending upon how complex your, your, uh, uh, your movement is. A few things I want to show you. By default, when you put down and make a mask, it's going to be add. What add means is that the space inside your, um, your mask shape is going to be kept or added. Everything else will be taken away. So if I look at, at uh, this one right here, this front of the shoe, it's set to add. If I were to take and move that to none, you can see that it uh, doesn't do anything. And that can be actually very helpful while you're working and building the shape. Sometimes turn on none so I can see through it and, and look at that. And you can also do subtract in which it will cut pieces out. So add and subtract are probably the two most useful ones. We've got these on add right here. Now again, what you're going to do is you're going to roto if you need to remove a background or create an outline for something. Or otherwise you need some sort of transparency or edge and there's not enough information to do a key or pull any type of mat. Then it's hand by hand roto, something that has been done for many, many decades. And uh, it's still an important um, foundation for a lot of visual effects work uh, today. Now what you also should know is that since this is a vector shape, what you're going to need to do, open up the um, attributes for the mask, is you should always give a little bit of feather to your roto shape. No matter how sharp your, your shape is, I'm going to come down here and just take the opacity up of this background layer a good bit. And as we zoom in and look at this, no matter how sharp your shape is, there's going to be some anti-aliasing and blurring. And what that means is this mask path does need to have some level of feathering. Maybe a pixel, maybe a little bit less, but you pretty much always need to put some feather on your roto shapes. Also, um, you're going to want to uh, primarily be animating the mask path. So I'm going to click here, make sure this is clicked, the little stopwatch, and that's going to give me a keyframe. So everything should start with a keyframe. And these are the keyframes as this goes along. Now what you might notice here is that I've got a good number of keyframes animated along here, up to about uh, three seconds worth. And then with the pants, notice how each shape has its own color. You can change the color if you want to kind of color code the way it works for you. But I've also changed them to label them, which is a real nice thing, especially when you get to a lot of mask shapes on one layer. Notice how with these pants, I'm doing a good bit of um, uh, roto right there, and you can see a lot of a lot of keyframes. Now, there's some uh, as a technique you need to follow along when you do roto. So I'm just going to drag along here, and you can see what's happening. Now, keep in mind that the back part of the shoe and this ankle, those aren't animated yet. There are no keyframes there. So watch as I, I'll uh, take and, and take this opacity down a little bit, so we can see a little bit more what's happening, like that. There we go. And as I play through the, uh, the timeline here, you can see those moving. So right now, 
The only two shapes that are animating or moving are the front of the sneaker and the bottom of that pants leg there. And what you want is nice, smooth, very consistent motion as your, your rotor shape is going along. The truth is if you're an animator and you know a good bit about keyframes and how motion works, that actually helps out with the roto because uh, it's the same type of thing happening. Keyframes and, and tweens and looking for major um, breaks in motion and, and major things where things, uh, movements hit their extreme end and stop and then start to pull back. All right, so that's kind of what we're looking for, nice smooth motion. And as you're doing roto, you'll, uh, at least in After Effects, you should really become good friends with the page up and page down uh, arrow keys on your keyboard. So page down will move you forward in the sequence like that, and page up will move you back. And so you're going to be doing a whole lot of this, kind of moving back and forth and seeing how your shapes work. You're also going to be zooming in really tightly like this and, and looking at them to make sure that your shapes are accurate. And I've been through um, a lot of uh, reviews where I take my shots to be checked and have the supervisor look at it, and I guarantee you they're going to be looking for any type of imperfection. Oh, you missed that. Go, go fix that bit. Here's a little bit sticking out. Go fix that. Oh, this line is moving too much. Go fix that. And so you really are looking very closely frame by frame to get good roto. I'm just telling you this so that you can keep that in mind as you're doing this because the goal is really accurate but also very smooth and concise and consistent roto. Here's some other things that you want to be aware of. I'm going to take and um, bring this opacity up so we can get the, the full amount there and see that. The question is where do you put your roto shapes? So um, if you're doing these vector shapes as you zoom in you still get those clean lines but the more you zoom in you can see you get the fuzzy edge of the pixels as you get anti-aliasing and all kinds of stuff going on. So where do you roto? You want, you want to really put the line on what you consider the last opaque pixel. So as I'm looking here I want that last opaque pixel right there where it starts to fade out and anti-alias with the background, you don't want to include that in your roto uh, shape. So think about this last opaque pixel. Where is that going to be? And you want to really keep it right there and keep it away from these uh, softer, blurrier edges. So you're, you're taking your roto. It should probably be in, kind of pulled in just a little bit. But that's a good thing we want to think about when we do roto. Again, it's last opaque pixel. Another thing is that lines need to be consistent and the points need to be consistent. You want to avoid what we call chatter in your roto shape, meaning that it kind of uh, dances around and wiggles and moves as you play through. And I've done this, uh, has seen this myself many times, that as I'm looking through something, I'm going to, by frame by frame, it looks great, it looks really accurate, all, all great, but then when it's played in full speed, it's not smooth and the edges kind of jump and wobble around. That's chatter, and that's one thing that you have to avoid if you want to do good roto. One way to do that is look at a point here. For example, I've got this point and I'm putting it right there on the edge of this sole where it kind of wraps around to the, to the canvas bar of the sneaker. So that point right there should always stay right there. As the shape is animating, we go through the footage, the bad thing would be if it starts to kind of creep and move down here. That's exactly what you don't want to do. You want to keep it kind of pinned right to that part of the shoe. I've got a point right here. I want to keep it pinned to right about there. And again, I've got one here. Notice how I'm using these Bezier curves to give me a nice curve here and the handles are controlling it. I'm not putting a whole lot of extra points here. I want to be uh, sort of frugal with my use of points for Roto, especially with Bezier curves. But keep these in the right place. And so let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to hit home and just go to the, uh, the beginning here. And again, look where these points are. So there's a point right there at the sole. There's a point where it kind of curves in the front. And there's a point, another point right there where you have that little bump. And just like anything you do with the pen tool in Illustrator, Photoshop, or anything else, you got the same tools here. So I built this with the pen tool. And I also use the convert tool when necessary to take these points and um, uh, click on them and move the handles independently. So all the stuff about Bezier curves is going to work perfectly right here. So you got out of Illustrator, still important stuff to know how to use Bezier curves. Another thing is that you want to keep your points consistent. What I mean by that is this shape is going to have the same number of points frame by frame all along. So if I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or so points, the exact same number of points 
is going to be all the way throughout the animation. Now you can add points if you need to, but that's going to add a point everywhere. And so it's not a good idea to be halfway through it and find a place where you need to add a point and add an extra point. That can mess up some movement somewhere previously and you have to go and fix it. So you want to kind of run through the footage and, and, and build a shape that is the um, an outline at its most complex so that it can work well and you don't have to add points uh, later on. All right. And um, so some things to keep in mind there as you're doing this. So watch as I'm going to just sort of play through this sort of frame by frame and advance it. Look at where this point is and should stay right about there as the shoe moves along. And you see how it's not um, drifting down here. All these points are staying in about the same spot. That's what you really want, to have good, solid, consistent roto from frame to frame. And this should give some pretty good results. Now it's going to be a little bit strange when the shoe actually changes shape drastically and does something like this, right? Still, I'm going to try and keep those points in the same spot as much as possible. Now I want to show something else here that I'm doing. Notice that when you have um, a lot of motion, I'll zoom out here, you get a lot of motion here, and it's going uh, really quickly, you get motion blur. So there's motion blur as the, the foot is moving at its fastest. Now notice that with the mask feather, I'm always going to have some feather right here, but you can animate the feather. So to show you how, how that's working, I'm going to take this opacity of that back layer down a little bit so we can kind of see what's happening. There we go. And I'm also going to click this button right here. As you're working with your shapes, generally you want to you want to have everything visible and see your lines, but to see the end result, you might want to hide the lines. So this button right here will toggle the mask uh, path visibility. See how it turns them on and off. Now what I would actually wish is that we could turn off individual mask paths, but it doesn't do that. It's just all or nothing. So notice as I turn this off, you can see I've got a very soft edge there. And what I've done is come here and I've um, I've uh, unchecked this um, constrained proportions so that I can move the vertical and the horizontal blur. I can animate those um, independently. So generally speaking, you want an overall little bit of blur, and that's just in this case I've done 0.5 pixels both width and height. But notice when it comes to here, I've I've said as the shoe is moving very fast, see that's moving very fast. It's getting more blur. I actually uh, gave it as much as 16.5 pixels vertical blur and then this blur is staying about the same although I might want to add a little bit more so notice what happens look at that nice soft edge right there so this is mimicking the motion blur that we're seeing in that shoe if I, if I kept the edge the same fairly crisp it wouldn't look realistic so notice as it goes from here and now that vertical blur is 0.5 pixels and I look at and see where is it most blurred right at that keyframe. And I put a keyframe there and I've made that blur a vertical of 16.5. And now it's going to about here. We'll move that and see where it goes. Oh, let's do this. Don't want to go to the end. There we are. And uh, okay. So as we go along here, so there's my 16.5. Now it goes down to 0.5 again. So now it's back to, to the normal, just a little bit of softness, and you can see how it really blurs for the most uh, extreme part of the motion, and then goes back to normal. And as I keep going along here, you can see that I'm taking up a bit more. As there's more fast motion here and more motion blur, I've taken this one up to about 10.5 pixels. And so now there's more vertical blur that way, and now it's back to normal. So as you're rotoing, keep in mind that you can add blur to these shapes, and you might actually need to, depending upon the amount of motion blur or movement that you have. So that's going to be very important as a nice little aspect uh, of, of realism to your roto. Nice edges like that. Okay, I'm going to turn my, my lines back on, and uh, I'll, I'll take this, uh, take this uh, opacity up. Uh, most of the way here. Okay, and I want to talk about just some basics of, of how you're going to get these roto shapes happening. The goal really is not to... Uh, no restarting. All right, 
So the goal really is not to go to every frame and then make a keyframe, make a keyframe, make a keyframe, make a keyframe. That's not going to give you good, consistent, uh, solid roto. What you want is to put keyframes in here and then do uh, as few as possible and then have after effects have after effects um, uh, do uh, what you what you really need with um, with keyframing and tweens. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. And we want to have after effects really do most of the work for us. And uh, the adjustments we're going to do are kind of minor. At least that's the way to go about getting good clean roto. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm looking at, um, let's see, I'm going to come here to this particular uh, mask. There we go. And come along here. I'll show you how I've gotten to this point so far. Okay. We'll come up here, and um, I've got a whole lot of keyframes. What I want to do is instead of just going keyframe, 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 I want to go in and put major areas where there are bits of change. That's what I really want to do. So kind of put in keyframes as though you were drawing uh, them or creating in some way of animation and um, worry about tweens later on. So I'm going to look for major changes in a shape. So here's the front of the shoe. It's all good and accurate. And I'll come here and I'm going to look, I'll zoom out a bit. There we go. I want to look and see how far we get there, how far it goes until we get to the edge of the movement. And let's, oh, see that? It starts going up. So I'm going to say, let's go to right. Oh, I would say about there. It's not exact science. It's okay. It doesn't really, doesn't really matter. But I'm going to say that's going to be my, my next keyframe. And what I want to do is I want to take this shape here and use, use um, After Effects uh, tools as much as possible so that I don't have to get into a lot of point editing. So I want to animate the entire thing. I'm going to double click on it. And I see this bounding box. Now I can move it and put it into position. There we go. And see, of course, it's giving me an automatic keyframe right there because I've got automatic keyframing going on, which is how you'd want to do this. Now the cool thing here is that much of this shoe is actually hidden by this pant leg. So that makes about half of it uh, fairly easy. I don't have to worry about it. So as opposed to getting in here and doing little additional um, or uh, particular points all at once, I'm going to try and, and uh, change the whole thing all together by moving, rotating, and scaling. So I've already moved it back here, and that's looking good. Now it's much bigger than what it was before, so I'm going to scale it back down. There we go. And still try and put it into position there, and perhaps even rotate it a little bit. And the idea is I'm trying to get um, After Effects um, transforming tools, which are just really uh, moving and, and uh, scaling and rotating, but I'm trying to get about as much of this as I can with that. And of course it's going gonna, it's gonna to tween me all throughout here between this keyframe and this keyframe. I'm going to zoom in here and look really tight on this. That's probably about as good as I can get it here. So I'll double click and now go to my point editing. And I'm hoping to get as much of, of this as possible taken care of with um, uh, with these uh, major sort of macro instead of micro animations or, or micro um, transformations here. So I'm keeping this point here as I talked about before, right there where that sole meets, it, meets the, uh, the canvas of the shoe. I'm going to pull this one down there and I'll kind of take this and, and move this up here and I would consider that probably this part is going to be uh, created by the, the latter part of the shoe. And this part here I don't have to worry about because it's getting covered up anyway. So I'm thinking, I'm going to look in here really tight. Maybe just kind of pull that in a little bit more. It's not, not too much. There we go. So notice how the majority of the change in shape has been done with the whole thing in a bounding box, not by point editing. So now I've gone to this point here. I'm not going to move forward. I'm going to take it and go back and see how... After Effects has actually tweened it from this. That's a correct keyframe. That's good. And taken it up here. And now that is a good keyframe. Now, as I, I've identified this span moving backwards, 
I'm going to start putting new keyframes in here. And where I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for the spot where the um, shape here is the most off, the most unaligned or different from where it, what it's supposed to look like. So as I come through here, you can see how it's pretty close. It's getting farther and farther away. Now it's pretty far. And now at some point, oh, it's really far there. At some point, it's going to start going back closer and match up. So moving back, I'll identify a very, very far area. So that looks pretty far right there. And you can see it, at some point, now it's actually moving with the shoe. Of course, we have camera motion too, which makes it a little more complicated. But I'll come here, and I think maybe right there, I see a good bit of distance. So I'm going to choose that to be my next keyframe. I'll double click on the shape, and, and before I move any individual points, I'm going to move the whole thing up here and zoom in a bit. Move the whole thing up and see just how close I can get it by scaling, by position, and by rotation. See, already you can see how close I can get that there just by using these overall adjustments with the bounding box. Now that I've done that, I'll double click and come in really tight and just do some little adjustments here. It's all looking pretty good. That's too far out. So let me take this one. I've got to kind of pull that in right there and pull that one in sort of like that. See, I want to keep that, that little contour going. Maybe that goes up a little bit. And it looks like this one needs to go down just a little bit. But you see how I'm just doing little um, adjustments here, but the overall shape is pretty good. And now that's my next keyframe. So I can see how is this going to tween between this keyframe and that last one. That's pretty good. That's not bad. I'm going to have to do some adjustments there, but it is getting pretty close. And see how After Effects is doing a lot of the work for me, and that's what I'm really looking for. So that I have to do as little as possible, which as you can see is going to be a good bit. But instead of uh, me having to come here and change every frame, if, if After Effects is already moving it and scaling it, then that means it's taking care of the, the bigger main movements. And it's going to be tough for me to do those frame by frame and get them consistent. I want smooth consistency, and that's what I'm going to get by having After Effects do the tweening for me. So I built this keyframe. That's good. And let's find where the next one should go. Again, I'm just going to come through here and look through a place where it's the most uh, misaligned or different. So close, close. You might see one frame where it just jumps quite a bit. See it jumps there and now it's closer. So I think right there, I'm going to put one right in there. Again, double click, just move it up. And you might be surprised at just how close you can get it. I'm going to pull that down a bit and see how close those get just by scaling it. Pretty good. Now just a little bit of point editing. I can move that one up there a little bit. Maybe move this one in. This one's pretty good. Um, oh, this is all actually not bad. I might need to move that out a little bit. And this part looks like it needs to go in. Maybe this one point goes up just a little bit there. So I see that pretty close, pretty good. Uh, this one probably needs to, to be brought in. Oh, that moved. It didn't want it to. Let me kind of pull that in there. Okay, so you see I haven't had to, to do a whole lot of changes here and After Effects took care of it for me, which is really very, very nice. And so now let me look and see how close that goes. So look at that. I can see this frame, it's off. So there it's good, there it's pretty good. There it's a little bit off, there it's quite off, and there it is there at my keyframe. So now I need to have a keyframe, and I'll put one right here. I'm going to move that down, just kind of fine-tune it. And it really is just kind of moving. If I look in really close here, uh, I'm going to have to do a tiny bit of adjustment. Maybe move that one a little bit. Take that curve a little bit right there. I'm going to pull that in so we don't see too much of the outer edge and I'm thinking maybe this part needs to go in a bit a bit like that 
Okay, so now let's take a look and see what I have. There we go. We'll go from this keyframe here. We got that, we got that, we got that, we got that. And hey, we've got rotoscope happening. And it's working pretty well. And so you see, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, defined this one um, keyframe here from this keyframe, and I'm working back to try and find the major points where it needs to be changed. As I come back here again, I'm going to look for the major points where it's not matching up. For example, right here, look how close it is here. We got that. Oh, look, there's a big, of a, a big gap. And sometimes you'll see that right when the motion starts. There's a gap at that first frame. So here's the my keyframe, that first frame of the tween. There's that gap. Let me double click and just kind of move it up. And it's really close. I might take this one side and scale it in just a bit. And that is looking pretty good right there. Maybe this can come down just a hair, just a little bit like that. Okay, so it goes from here to here and look at it as it follows along. And of course, uh, you see you need to add a few more right here, but you can see how close it's going already. So now After Effects is really giving me that motion I need and it's even scaling it as it gets smaller and I'm doing tiny adjustments. Now, as it turns out, I may end up having a bunch of keyframes here anyway, but the important part is I'm not starting from scratch on each one. Um, After Effects has tweened and given me a pretty close estimate already, and I'm just making the final adjustments there. So when it's all said and done, what you should have is some really nice, uh, nice movements like this, where you get really accurate, really close, accurate uh, keyframing to get you a nice roto. And that's really the secret to Roto. You want to make it consistent. You want to make it clean and, and uh, nice and smooth from frame to frame. And the more, whatever program you're using, the more you allow on its tweening and keyframe and animating abilities, and your adjustments are going to be kind of minor to just fine tune it, the better off your Roto will be. And you'll have great composites and great visual effect shots. And anyone else working with you will uh, be impressed with your Roto. That's it for tonight. Hope you enjoyed it and learned it, and stay tuned for what we cover next time.